Welcome everyone. Today I wanted to bring together some information on the tree of death, which is also known as the Kabbalah tree, and share some of the memories and the deliverance and the healing, the revelations that really brought me breakthrough here. I know from survivors that have reached out that many survivors are finding these internal structures as they are working through deliverance and prayer announcements. And for me, it was a huge support to just have an idea of how these were used in programming. The more information we have, the more targeted we're able to be with our prayer and the more we're able to break off with targeted prayer in terms of spiritual bondage. So amazing Amanda Byers has great information on the Kabbalah tree and that type of programming in her DID course, which I'll be referencing some of today. And I'm also going to be renouncing her prayer for the Kabbalah tree so we can do that together. So previously I've spoken about the new age, about antichrist programming, which is all part of the light or the upper tree. This corresponds to the left side, the logical masculine side of the brain. And programming here is around socially acceptable constructs. So, you know, we're talking about things like new age beliefs, um, which also include the new age politics that we have at play all around the world at the moment. And things like Wicca or nature worship, things like Eastern religions or yoga. And it could also be that we have taken on um, or been reprogrammed with these kind of beliefs through things like life coaching, through self-help, through corporate training and education, as we know that the Jesuits have been very busy setting up and controlling all of the education, or we should really call it the indoctrination system. So the symbol here on this upper tree is the hexagram the six-pointed star, which we see today on the State of Israel flag. We see it in the Metatron symbol of the new age. And it's a symbol that is included in many pagan religions all around the world, including the Catholics. You'll see that same symbol. And, you know, today you'll actually see that symbol of the hexagram on many controlled platforms, many platforms that are leading leading survivors and sleepers into new age and reprogramming ops um, are really displaying this hexagram symbol. And in a sense, Babylon fell. It's the symbols that are the way that the cults are able to communicate with each other, identify each other and know who's who and who's working for who and in what type of role. And the hexagon, it is the two-dimensional cube. So we're coming back to the black cube here, which we've spoken about before, which is universally symbolic of mind control. So today we're going to be looking at the lower tree, the tree of death. And this is the programming that is not as readily accessible as the upper tree. It is much deeper submerged in the subconscious and, you know, we would describe parts that are programmed and basically imprisoned here in the lower tree as cult loyal. So what this means is they have tasks programmed into them and attached to them through demonic bondage, through Nephilim, through dead human witchcraft, familiar and ancestral spirit. So all this spiritual bondage uh, can give them the tasks and run the tasks as well. And these tasks are for the kingdom of darkness. So in a single survivor, there may be parts set up as assassins, parts set up for rituals, parts set up that are trained in witchcraft, theta assassins, which is an energy killer, sex slave parts, courier parts, etc. So literally in a single survivor, there can be different groups programming different parts within their system. So an example of this that I can share in relation to my own programming was, you know, I've had to deprogram and reintegrate parts that were set up to cope with rituals and were programmed in witchcraft because the German side of my 
family overseen by my grandmother were from the Black Forest, which is an area that is very, very thick in deep, dark witchcraft. And yet at the same time, so very similar years that this was happening, I was being taken out of my suburban family home and programmed in military operations that were much more around astral warfare, around virtual reality warfare. And the only common factor here was it was a Catholic primary school that I was attending in Adelaide at the time. And it was also a Catholic church that was located literally next door to my grandmother's house in Port Broaden on the Air Peninsula in SA. And I feel as, you know, we, we continue to connect the dots as survivors and more and more survivors are remembering, we're going to really find just how extensive the Jesuit operations through our schools, through Catholic churches and all other Protestant churches um, have really been here in Australia because they've been running so many operations that have been utilising state systems. So the way that these parts of within the dark tree are kept submerged and really kept from conscious awareness is that the programmers create enough horrific trauma to basically create an amnesiac barrier. So uh, a barrier that is not easily crossed and doesn't allow the memories to be pulled up in just the normal day to day. And this amnesiac barrier has so much trauma linked to it that really the individual doesn't want to go near it. They won't want to really go into these areas to think about these things. Um, And if they get too close, it's painful. Um, And I think all survivors can say that, you know, it's very much programmed into us because of the amount of trauma, pain, torture that we go through, at least until we become conscious and start healing to avoid pain at all costs. So this really keeps the memories and these parts hidden from the individual and they may be called up by triggers um, of frequency, like words, colours and sounds for tasks by a programmer or it can even be done externally just by the frequencies or using spirits. So a slave could spend 95% of their life just in front altars in their upper tree, uh, which is all very socially acceptable. No one around them would really think that there was anything too wrong with them doing a bit of Wicca or or new age practices. And they would have very, very little consciousness, if any, of what they're being used for in, in the nighttime hours or what, what they're being used for as tasks when they're called up by programmers. So often these amnesiac barriers will have programs around them of self-sabotage that can be triggered when any emotion is brought up, any memory is brought up, or even trigger words, anything that lands too close to that trauma. Many of these are addictions and they can be things like being a workaholic, drinking, eating disorders, over-exercising, technology addictions, and just keeping busy. So I can look back now and just see how much during my 20s and 30s I was literally on the run, on the run from myself. And I was really able to do this and still feel very successful because I was at work. But meanwhile, deep inside, I was absolutely falling apart. And there were so many emotions that I would never go near. There were so many memories of my childhood, things that I'd always had that was very, very uncomfortable that I just wouldn't wouldn't want to talk about, wouldn't want to go near and would just block out really. And any time that emotions really became too much, you know, which was rare because I was so busy, <laughs> keeping myself busy and running away from everything. But anytime those emotions would become too much, my body would just go through a complete breakdown. And in the end, it was what I thought was a complete career burnout that ended up being God stopping me and really just putting me on his path and his will and and asking me to face the things from my childhood that that I hadn't yet. So it's um sometimes at the time the things that 
uh, the biggest changes can be so very challenging. And now I look back and just think, praise you, God. Thank you so much for chasing after me and, and making me start unpacking these things so I could heal. So what these traumas are that create enough dissociation to really create these deep splits are breaking attachment bonds. So while rituals, the horrific pain, the shock, the the fear, the tortures are, they're absolutely horrific, but it's when they're leveraged with, you know, the primary attachments that are forged with, you know, our primary caregivers, often our fathers, our mothers, it's when these attachments are broken that they really create the deepest wounds that are emotional. So these are wounds of things like betrayal, abandonment, rejection, grief, and these are all experienced as a family is just broken apart. The family is so central to God's purpose and work on earth. And what we see is the cults use so many inversions of what, you know, what is God's will? They take what God has given to us as promises and they deliberately mock them. They take what is of goodness and holiness and they really seek to just break it and make it decrepit. So there's a particular part of the Bible that covers the laws around sexuality and family. And so many of these are used in the programming of the tree. So I wanted to just have a look at these together now. So this is in Leviticus 18. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Ye shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother and thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife shall thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. The nakedness of thy son's daughter or of thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover for theirs is thine own nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter, begotten of thy father, she is thy sister, and thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister, she is thy father's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, for she is thy mother's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother, and thou shalt not approach to his wife. She is thy aunt. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law. She is thy son's wife, and thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter, and neither shall thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness, for they are her near kinswoman. It is wickedness. Neither shall thou take a wife to her sister to vex her, to uncover her nakedness, besides the other in her lifetime. Also thou shalt not approach unto a woman, to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. 
and thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch, neither shall thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Neither shall thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you, and the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled, that the land spew not you out also. When you defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you, for whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them, shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep my ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs, which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. So I remember reading this for the first time, which was only about 18 months ago. And I had some memories, but not all of them as I do now. And I literally felt that I'd been able to tick off most of what is listed there as a to not do, uh, as having been done to me as a child. And, you know, it really is just so evil what these cults and covens do to kill, steal and destroy life, to destroy humanity and to destroy children. You know, praise praise God for adopting us into his kingdom and praise God for the salvation, the deliverance and the healing that is available for all children. And, you know, I just want everyone that's listening to know that, you know, no no matter what was done to you as a child, what you were used for as a child and even as an adult, you know, even if it's still been happening to you recently, you know, God has made provision for healing and for deliverance from all of these things when we turn to him. Isaiah 1 verse 18, it says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. So the rituals that are used to load each of these shells or separate of the tree with demons, principalities, they're loaded with Nephilim, with witchcraft, ancestral, familiar spirits. These rituals are all based on sex magic. And this really is the fuel for Satan's kingdom. It is their gasoline. So they have this belief that they extend their life, that they steal energy from a child, from an adult, from an animal, when they take away their innocence. So it's not just about the physical perversion of rape, lust, and pedophilia. It's actually about offering these children as a living sacrifice to demonic forces. And by doing this, the humans that are involved are promised things like longevity, long life, uh, extended lives, power, control of others, witchcraft powers. You know, it really is all witchcraft which we can simply define as you know, control, domination and manipulation of others, particularly when those ways of manipulating are unseen. And this witchcraft, these rituals are really so much more extensive than we would ever think. 
And it's not just in, you know, satanic cults where they're happening. There are many survivors that have disclosed here in Australia and around the world how media and entertainment have been completely compromised and often set up by the cults and the venues, the places where they're recording this, you know, mass mind control that's released over populations are sites where, you know, at the television channels, at the radio stations, there are rituals uh, happening and there's also, you know, horrific child rape and, and all sorts of wickedness. So here in Australia, the Theosophical Society is a key part of the new age and of rolling out this mass mind control. And in 1926, the Theosophical Society founded one of Australia's first public broadcast radio stations, which was 2GB, which was named after the hermetic occultist Giordano Bruno. Initially operating out of the manor, 2GB promoted the Theosophical Society It promoted Freemasonry, eugenics, racism, and anti-Christian sentiment. There's a survivor named Tim Roy who's written a book called Big Tim, Little Tim, and his book is about his experiences of ritual rape committed by multiple 2GB radio announcers, including Gordon Moyes, who actually committed suicide while under police investigation, including Alan Jones, whose television appearances were momentarily suspended during the police inquiry. But of course, no one was ever charged and all went on and continued their careers. And no doubt they continued their extracurricular activities, including little boys. And I just wanted to read what survivor Tim Roy wrote in his testimony about the 2GB crew, which I feel really highlights, you know, what this sex magic is and what it means to to these people. So Tim writes, my name is Tim Roy, formerly Timothy Roy Horswell, until the age of 28 years, and Timothy Roy Deasley from age 28 to 36 years. I refer to the formal police witness statement I made to Constable Laura Paul the Sex Crime Squad and the State Crime Command of the New South Wales Police. I offer Australians and the press to obtain a copy of my statement under Freedom of Information. In my formal statement, I provided New South Wales with the names of high-profile pedophiles who raped me between the ages of 5 and 10. These men would not touch boy victims over the age of 10 years because children 10 and under could not provide witness testimony to court. My perpetrators included Roger Clemson, who was a TV personality, Gordon Moyes, a pastor, and former 2GB radio station owner and announcer, Alan Jones, a 2GB radio announcer, John Singleton, an advertising executive, former 2GB radio station owner, and John Laws, a 2GB radio announcer. The pedophile activities of these men were documented in my father's diaries, which contained carbon copies of letters written by him to John Laws, ASCA manager and ritual abuse advocate Liz Mulliner witnessed the content of these diaries, which I gave her to read. Liz Mulliner later failed to assist police and support me by testifying to the existence and content of these diaries. My father worked at Derek's boys' home, where John Singleton, John Laws and Alan Jones would conduct weekend visits and take Derek boys away from the home for the weekend under the guise that they were giving them a social weekend outing. Instead, the children, in ritual abuse, where they would chant, we take these boys, vitality, for our own virility. We take these boys' virility for our own vitality. So we can really see how sex magic and the idea of the taking, the stealing of energy from from children is such a prominent theme within these rituals. So with each cell or sephora in the Kabbalah tree, 
there are going to be rituals like the one just described by Tim Roy, where sex magic is used, where demons, Nephilim and principalities are called in to covenant with the children that are being abused and be used by the adult humans there as well. So the cults have programmers and witches like the mothers of darkness that speak to principalities and fallen angels about what needs to be done for the programming of each child. It's extremely sophisticated because these beings are so advanced and have been doing this for thousands of years. So particularly with the lower tree, they will use traumas as well as shock. So I'm talking about electric shocks here. Uh, and breaking attachment bonds to create, you know, traumas that are severe enough to really load these lower points on the tree. And as I was praying through and breaking off all of the entities that had been attached to my lower tree, I would actually go through the sensation of when the entity was being cast out and broken off by Jesus and, and prayer I would actually have a shock through my body and I'd never experienced that before as demons and Nephilim were leaving and I was praying to God and asking why am I having this shock that's literally going through my heart as I'm doing this and you know I was shown that because these entities were put in often through shock through traumas of stopping the heart through shock they're put in at such a deep um deep point within our nervous system that when they come out, that shock has to be released um, from the nervous system as well. And I've heard other survivors mention that they've had had similar as well. So I'm going to share one of the memories that for me was one of the hardest to reintegrate. And this memory was actually keeping me from really getting down to these original core splits, the eight princess parts or gems. And, you know, as I got closer and closer and just continued praying and pulling back the layers that were um, keeping these parts hidden and keeping them imprisoned, I literally found that they were just wrapped up in, you know, witchcraft nets of, of death, of trauma. And the traumas that were really holding these parts down for me involved incest and bestiality. So my German grandmother trafficked me through the Methodist Church of South Australia. And as we know, the Jesuits have really infiltrated all Protestant churches. And part of that is ensuring that priests and the church leaders are compromised. So children like me, were being used as sex slaves, as honeypots that have, you know, men blackmailed into keeping each other's dirty little secrets. And this is really how the brotherhoods, the Jesuits have been able to enforce their oaths of secrecy for generations because people are just too scared to speak out or report because they have too much themselves to lose. So my grandmother was in Port Broadham, which is on the Air Peninsula, a regional area in South Australia. And back when I was a child, my grandmother's property really extended over the half of the block. It's now been subdivided and there's another house that takes the place where there was an outdoor laundry, which was used as a torture room. And it was a place where I've spoken out about in, before in my testimony where you know, I would be hung on a rope. There would be rituals happening in that room. There would be programming happening in that room um, p- with people from the church and other people from the community. And they would be doing things like rape, incest, summoning in spirits through bone magic. So just a few metres away from the outdoor laundry was another small building which was again, totally disconnected from the main house. And this was an outhouse. So it's what we know in Australia as the Dunny. Between these buildings, it was concreted and the concrete led down, sort of sloped down and it started leading down to a dirt road. The road would continue and it would go down from my, from coming right into my grandmother's property, which was literally right into the backyard, down to the street front. And it would run down the side of a Catholic church. And this is the Catholic church here. So we can see the IHS standing for Isis Horus Set. 
And this dirt road really meant that people were able to arrive at night without coming in off the street. So it was undercover and the neighbours wouldn't notice and they'd be able to drive up straight past the Jesuit church to the laundry torture room and there would be, yeah, traffic coming in and out on, you know, nights when they were running things in the backyard there. And I've spoken before about how I would be left outside at times in, you know, what seems like a sunken well in the next door paddock. So this empty block literally connected my grandmother's property to the church property. So between them, there was no one that lived there. So it was very convenient to make sure that there were no neighbours to see what was happening. And literally between the church, my grandmother's property, which was huge, like taking up several blocks and this empty paddock, you know, the Jesuits had a huge area there that no one was able to really see what was happening, especially at night if they were just driving through on the road. So behind this outhouse and laundry that was in the middle of the garden and running alongside the dirt road of my grandmother's property was like a huge veggie garden, which was pretty typical of Australia at that time. But what wasn't unusual there was, there was a huge metal enclosure made out of sheep's wire. Um, so completely covered, it had a roof and sides and this enclosure housed a male grey kangaroo. So I remember as a child, I think he was around until I was about seven or eight years old. He was absolutely huge. And I've went and researched just how heavy these kangaroos are because, you know, when you're a child of five or six, everything seems big. Um, but, you know, these grey kangaroos, a male can stand when it's standing on its back legs at up to two metres. Um, so that's six or seven feet tall. And they can weigh around 70 kilos. So they're absolutely huge, especially compared to a child. So this kangaroo would be brought out for rituals where children, including myself, would be strung up on ropes between the two buildings, the two outdoor buildings of the laundry and the outhouse. And without going into too much detail here, as I don't want it to be you know, triggering to survivors that are working through their own memories, I would describe these rituals as orgies. It was animals, men, women. It was witchcraft. It was ancestral spirits from the family lines being called in, principalities, Nephilim being called in. And it was horrific. It was it was absolutely terrifying. And I think for a child just to be around such a huge animal uh, as well as, you know, being hurt by it, it was it was just one of the most shocking things I've had to, had to go through remembering to date. And it literally took me about six months to just work through all the pieces um, that were this memory and reintegrate them because it was obviously so shocking to me as a child things had been broken up so much. And so part of me healing through this and understanding it was like, why do they actually do these horrific practices of, you know, incest because there were family members involved in that ritual as well? And why bestiality? Why do they do this? So the Bible gives us information on this. So in Exodus, it says, Whoever lies with an animal shall be put to death. And you shall not lie with any animal and so make yourself unclean with it. Neither shall any woman give herself to an animal to lie with. It is perversion. Cursed be anyone who lies with any kind of animal and all the people shall say amen. So we can really see that the Bible condemns this sin very strongly and, you know, this is because it is a completely unnatural perversion. It is against God's plan for family, for children. And it really goes back to that ancient seed war that started in Genesis 6. And it's so, it's so sad to see children 
being used for such decrepit acts by the cults because they want to anger God. They want to infuriate him. And, you know, they really are using these acts to essentially put a curse over the children, you know, before before they're even able to escape. And you know, the saddest thing is, is, you know, because these traumas are so horrific, they are blocked out. They go into, you know, the unconscious mind behind the amnesiac barriers. And you know, that child who's become an adult really doesn't have a chance to heal, a chance to to break those curses over their life. And you know, I've been speaking to deliverance ministers just to ask them in preparation for sharing on this what bestiality, you know, really means to survivors, you know, and why it's so important for us to break it off. And you know, Amanda Byers was telling me that it's about a curse of insanity. And you can imagine that it's just, it's such a terrifying thing for a child to experience because it's another species. It's completely unnatural, you know, on top of all of the the incest and the pain and the horror of what is sexual trauma and rape. This is just like an even more decrepit layer of it altogether. And, you know, I would just add to that curse of insanity, like my grandmother's side of the family, one of the reason why I ran from them so much as a child and and wanted nothing to do with them was they were some of the most insane people, you know, that, that I had ever met literally spending a day with them as a child, you know, it was like being in a mental asylum. There would be verbal fights, physical fights, just complete, complete insanity um they were all on you know extreme strengths of schizophrenia medication and pharmaceuticals for you know depression bipolar for everything that you could think of and they were still just so so broken so it's so very very sad you know what what is done and i think the the other part that you know bestiality represents in terms of sexual deviancy is you know it it is just so evil upon the animal as well like it's not something that the animal would want to be doing um you know and in the bible we read how you know when these things were happening that you know god was calling for the animals to be destroyed because the the seed had been contaminated by these practices um and it really just is destroying god's creation and for the children you know bestiality really degrades humanity you know there's nothing natural about a human being with an animal in any way it's a complete breaking of like what is wrong and right in you know a young child's mind what is natural and unnatural and what is love and lust it's just all completely broken and jumbled um, and moved from what God intended for our lives to really what the cults intend, um, intend, which is, which is so awful. And like, as, as well as remembering, uh, you know, what happened to me within those rituals, it was really hard to remember and just process what the kangaroo went through um, in these rituals as well, because it, it was a wild animal, you know, like it was in a full, a full cage that, you know, was even over this its sky. So it wouldn't escape. And, you know, it would be dragged out to these rituals with a belt, usually my grandfather's belt and being dragged out by my grandfather um, because he was its handler and it was wild. So it was handled incredibly roughly as the children were um, you know, and it would at times, if it wasn't performing, it it would be beaten or it would be shocked as well. And you know, I can remember as a child during the daytime, so with absolutely no memory of what was um going on at night, you know, I would be wanting to feed the kangaroo the kitchen scraps. And when I would go down and feed the kangaroo, often with other children with me and you know, other adults to obviously supervise and we'd be feeding it through the fence or really just throwing it through because it was you know, quite violent at times. You know, the kangaroo would 
often become sexually excited when it was around children, when we were just feeding it. And that really is, you know, a red flag. Um, you know, if you see animals where they're, you know, becoming excited, where the animal's penis is is starting to come out, you know, that's not a natural response when they're around children. So that's a, a real red flag to be aware of. If you're visiting someone and wondering why their animals are acting very strangely. And, you know, another thing that you know, I would just say that has really helped me find pieces and clues and memories, um, you know, as I've processed all of all of um, this because it was so shocking, was just to remember where and when and what I was ushered away to away from as a child because I was always ushered away from the kangaroo during daytime hours. I was always ushered away from the laundry from that dirt road, I was never allowed anywhere near it, even though it literally ran into the property. Um, and, you know, these families, they don't want children being programmed to be in the ritual areas, the programming areas um, that are being used as night at night. And I believe that is because they just don't want the bleed through. They want to keep the sides, so keep the parts that are operating um, to, to take that abuse and trauma in the evening completely separate from the daytime parts and that only happens when things like location things like places are kept very separate as well and one thing I also noticed was a lot of these places where programming was happening particularly at my grandma's house because it was a place that I was going through all the time um, during daytime hours as well as being programmed in the places where programming would take place would often be changed, renovated, different colours of paint. They'd be putting up different wall coverings and there was no real reason for it. It was kind of like, oh, yeah, six months later, we're just doing another redecoration. And a few of the times I know that's because of the damage. So obviously there's things like blood and, um, you know, when people are being programmed, they might throw their arms around and put holes in walls, et cetera. So a few of the times it was for those reasons, but it seems like they just wanted to continually keep things changing over. So there would never be that remembrance of what was happening to the, the parts that were being programmed and that were being suppressed. So these are the parts in the lower tree. One place I was always drawn to in the garden area as a child was the cement between those two buildings and so this was during the day I would stand there I would play with my tennis ball or whatever and I would just run up and down them because they were on a little bit of a slope and I had no absolutely absolutely no idea at the time of what I was feeling but I could feel energy I could feel energy rushing through that area and as a child I had no idea what that was I just felt the exhilaration and Probably, sadly, a lot of that was the demons that were attached to me through the rituals, through the bestiality ritual that was happening in that spot were probably getting very excited with me physically standing in that spot. But it was a portal. It was a huge tear in the fabric of reality because of that bestiality, because of what was happening, because of the incest and the trauma and the sacrifices that were enacted on that spot. So... It's, it's just interesting to see how, you know, as children, we can be so aware of these energies without really understanding completely what they are. So I had absolutely no idea that kangaroos were used in rituals. It's not really something that I would think about. It seems pretty far out until I process this memory. And as I process this memory, I actually come across a picture of Rolf Harris. Now this this picture, Rolf Harris, for anyone who doesn't know, was um a very famous Australian musician that made it big all over the world. Uh, and he was convicted of pedophilia late in life. Didn't really have, you know, any huge consequence of that. He had all of the typical cult honours. So he was like an Order of Australia, which is an order from the Queen, which you only get if you're part of the New World Order. Um, he was inducted in, into the Aria Hall of Fame um, and he was very famous for his music and for, you know, some of the instruments that he created. 
grab that position about there. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Rolf, I know that the Australians aren't affected by hierarchy and things like that, but I did notice that you kissed Sir Jim's ring when he came in. <laughs> Is this an exception for you? Yeah, I mean, we go back a long time. Uh, eh? What was it, several weeks ago, wasn't eh? it, when we first several met? Several weeks, yeah. You've been playing your records a long time, though. Mm. Well, you played a couple of them over the years in the 60s. A thousand and times have I played... <laughs> Yeah. Don't be cruel. Bruce Wright <laughs> shoes. Yes. <laughs> All those things with this young man. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Lovely, lovely, yeah. nice. Okay, straight away. One, two, three. You've got to get Rolf back here and do an over there shoulder shot of me listening. Is this the finished product, Rob? Yeah. Is it? May I present that to you, Sir James? Is oh. it Sir James or Sir Jimmy? No, it's Jimmy today. Sir Jimmy. Yeah, today's fee dictates it's Jimmy. Sir James comes a lot more expensive. Oh, I see. <laughs> I didn't know they were giving you a fee. I mean. My goodness gracious. What do you think of that? I have never been... Well, you've never looked at it yet. What are you talking about? <laughs> or are you watching it upside down? I'm Sorry. looking at it upside down. I've got Antipodean eyes and I can see it upside down. What do I see? I see strong character lines. I see liquid brown eyes. I see the firm jutting chin. All together makes nothing like a you. horrible <laughs> sight. <laughs>
There's an old Australian stockman lying, dying. Ah. And he gets himself up onto one elbow and he turns to his four mates who are gathered round and he says, Cut your hair once a year, boys. Cut your hair once a year. If it covers your ear, you can't hear, boys. So cut your hair once a year. All together now. Time me kangaroo down. Small time me kangaroo down. Oh, time me kangaroo down. Oh, you must do Oh, Mr. Kangaroo down. Zero, <laughs> dear, dear. I've forgotten the words. Take care of me. Make sure. Look out after me. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Look after me, Momona. Now, here we go. Bye-bye. Don't ill treat me, pet dingo, Ringo. Don't ill treat me, pet dingo. He can't understand your lingo, Ringo. So don't ill treat me, pet dingo. All together now. Time me kangaroo down. Small. Time me kangaroo down. <laughs> Time the kangaroo down, sport. Time the kangaroo down. I think George's guitar's on the blink. I think George's guitar's on the blink. Well, it shouldn't go. Ning a ning a blink. Hey, hey, that's really on the blink. All together now. Time the kangaroo down, sport. Time the kangaroo down. Time the kangaroo down, sport. Time the kangaroo down. Prop me up by the wall, Paul. Prop me up by the wall. I'll scream and cheer till I fall, Paul, if you'll prop me up by the wall. All together now, time me kangaroo down, Paul. Time me kangaroo down. Time me kangaroo down. That's where it should be now. Time me kangaroo down. Hey, keep the hits coming on, John. Keep the hits coming on. At least till after I'm gone, John. Keep the hits coming on. All together now, time me kangaroo down, Paul. Time me kangaroo down. Time me kangaroo down. That's it. And with this very last gasp, he says, Tan me hide when death comes. Chums. <coughs> oh, dear. Tan me hide when death comes. So we tanned his hide when he died, Clyde, and the Ringo's got it on his drums. All together now, time me kangaroo down, sport. Time me kangaroo down. What a phony bunch of laughter that was. Hey, what, what about messing up that ending after all the rehearsal? We did at least once. It? But you forgot the words, didn't you, Rob? At the beginning. Down. Timey Kangaroo Down Sport is also appears in Wolf Creek, um, which is like an Australian horror movie. And it's pretty sick how it appears in this movie too, which is um, definitely a programming movie where the victim is being tied to the chair and threatened by the main character with an, a huge knife. So all these ritual triggers and they both just break out in song singing timey kangaroo down sport together. So, so many triggers there, especially being that, you know, the, the film is all about, you know, a young German couple there's a kidnapper in the bush that's, you know, doing all these sick um, sick rituals and killings in the Australian outback. And, you know, it's all triggers leading to, you know, these, these use of kangaroos in rituals. And there were many children that I saw at my grandmother's house that, um, you know, were going through these rituals. So, you know, I share this, you know, for the many survivors in Australia that are remembering when I've been asking deliverance ministers about bestiality and its effect on survivors and what we need to pray through, it's so common. It's almost always the incest and bestiality are going to be used in the programming. And it is definitely, you know, a trauma that is used to program the dark tree because it's, it's so horrific. It's so hard to hold, you know, for those. It's it's hard for me to hold as an adult now at my age and just to think, you know, the, the child that went through this who was like five or six years old, um, judging by, um, you know, what, what I can landmark around me, you know, there is no way that a child can hold that kind of that kind of confusion and and trauma of being um abused by an animal and i should add as well is i believe that the years that 
I was being used in rituals with the kangaroo were around 82 to 84. And Rolf Harris was out in Port Pirie, which is literally like a small mining town in the middle of nowhere in regional South Australia. So a very unusual place for Rolf Harris to to visit, who's a you know big shot musician traveling all around the world. And the place and the mural that we just had a look at of um, the kangaroo is in what's called the Northern Festival Centre. And I just thought, you know, let's have a look at where the nearest Catholic church is because the Catholic church next to my grandmother's house, which is St. Margaret's Catholic Church of Port Broughton, it says that it's also part of a parish connected to Kadena, which was about half an hour away, and Port Pirie. So I thought, what's the chances that this same Catholic church that's right next door to my grandmother's house where I was being abused by kangaroos, you know, what's the chances that there's perhaps a Catholic church close to, you know, where this northern festival centre where Rolf Harris has painted the kangaroo? So the festival centre is 105 Gertrude Street in Port Pirie and the Catholic Church is 106. Like, it's just too much to even be a coincidence. And it really just shows, like, again, how set up the Jesuits are in terms of, you know, having property around towns as well. And really with hiding all of these things, they've shown us that the best place for them to hide it is right in front of us and keep it all under a spell so we never think anything of it. So some of the other demons that I was covenanted to on that lower tree, I just wanted to share those because, you know, obviously all our programming is different to a degree, but so many things are very similar because they're so good at doing this after so many thousands of years that, you know, why change it? Why stray? So some of the other entities that I was covenanted to there were Dagon, um, who is a very prominent principality within the Catholic Church. And we can see, you know, in so many depictions that the Pope, you know, his hat is like the fish's head, we can see, you know, all of these ceremonial uh, symbols that show that they're worshipping Dagon. And Dagon was very prominent throughout the areas where I was trafficked in symbols. And these are all fishing areas. A lot of these people make a living or know someone that makes a living through being a fisherman because they're all coastal towns. Um, and I was brought around many of those towns when I was about six months old traveling with my parents and my grandparents I was the first grandchild and they took me around and camped in a whole lot of these little fishing towns in Port Piri in Kadena you know in different towns um, around that region and as I was healing and breaking off um, all of the rituals, you know, I was finding that, you know, those towns I'd been covenanted to. And it was literally like as a baby, they had taken me around and put my essence in those places. And it was Dagon that all of that was linked to as well. Lilith was over a couple of um, those uh, sephirot, those shells as well. The Queen of Heaven who is the Kundalini snake. Um, so she was in there in multiple um, depictions of herself. So Carly um, was another one in there as well. And, you know, through these lower trees, I just found there was a real concentration of marine snakes, of Nephilim snakes, of just, you know, the dark goddess that we started talking about um, in the last prayer video as well. And, you know, a lot of these parts were very young, they were very, very broken, very hurt and covenanted to just so many, you know, wicked demonic forces like the Queen of Heaven, like Carly. And, you know, they had this feeling of those parts of just being very vampiric, very deep in witchcraft, you know, it reminded me of a really dark time that I went through between about 13 and 
17 years of age, which are two very significant timings of rituals for survivor programming as well. And I would describe myself at that time as being really goth. Like I was obsessed with um with vampires because there was all of course all the vampire movies out at that time with um Jesuits like Tom Cruise starring in them. But I was really obsessed with death. You know, I was drinking, I was experimenting with drugs, you know, I, I wanted tattoos and you know, I just wanted that dark, dark life. Thank thank Lord that I I grew out of that. But you know, it was all of these feelings of just, you know, just being broken and really just having a lot of daddy issues on these parts uh, combined with intense demonic overload and you know praise god for deliverance because it was so beautiful praying and getting these demons and programming off these parts and just seeing them as like what they really were like little five six ten twelve year old parts of me that were just so broken from horrific trauma and they were absolutely horrible when they come up you know spitting and cussing and carrying on but once those demonic energies had been broken off once the programming had been destroyed by Jesus they were just little parts of me that needed to be healed and have been able to be healed with Jesus and reintegrated which brings so much peace so between these sephiro these shells on the lower parts of the trees are tunnels and ways that they connect. And these are called the Typhonian tunnels, which we're going to pray through um, in Amanda's prayer shortly. And these paths are essentially set up within survivors and they allow access into us by Satan's kingdom. They allow access by cult and common members, by ancestral or witchcraft spirits, or by just demons, principalities, and Nephilim. So it's so very important to pray over these as we're going to be doing today and just close them all down, give them all over to Jesus um, so they can be sealed under the blood of Jesus so that you're no longer being able to be accessed from external forces. And, you know, this is often where parts are hidden in like the lower tree or enslaved in that lower tree and these parts you know that survivors have little to no conscious awareness of are being used to be astrally traveling into rituals to do the bidding and tasks of the enemy's kingdom and until you know these parts are reintegrated um and these tunnels are shut down you know those parts can still be be being used um you know for, for evil things so it's so important to be doing this work and just healing you know facing you know the emotions which can be really hard at the time but I embrace it now I'm just like I feel it let let it go and it's done you know I, I can give it all to Jesus and know that that part of me that was just so drowning in that emotion is finally freed and that's truly beautiful um, so these tunnels for me, you know, I would experience in dreams, like I can remember a lot of dreams as a child where I was like burrowing down into the earth or um, going through cupboards, walls, ceilings, like going through spaces within walls. Um, you know, I've had other survivors describe them to me as cave-like um, or even like little tiny rooms Um sometimes laboratory like that we're connecting into each other so the thing with programming is is you it, it's based off what you imagine and what you are taught to to install by the demons and programmers and witches so yours may look similar to those or it may look a little bit different and one other thing I would say is I would also have a lot of dreams as a child it's going down into caves through the water and these were definitely connected to these tunnels as well so they can there can be all different parts of the elements in there so water air earth and fire going through these tunnels as well so just be aware that they can look different depending on what element is being used for that programming part as well so this amazing prayer from beautiful Amanda Byers is going to help us clear out these tunnels to close them and I believe it will be a very powerful prayer to support survivors getting free and it feels just so timely with what I hear many are praying through and healing at this time. 
So as always, I would suggest have a pen and paper handy to make notes if anything is highlighted uh, for you by Holy Spirit as we pray. It's also very good to repeat these prayers. Um, you know, if you watch this video and feel it moving things, go and, um, you know, print off or read the read and renounce the PDF document. I'll pop it in the video description and, you know, read it out loud yourself and, you know, just repeat it over several days or weeks as the programming really is in layers. Um, and I would just say because this is breaking off the Kabbalah tree, it is very, very early programming that's been enforced a lot. Um, so it will I know for me, it took, you know, efforts over, you know, doing it over several days in a row, several weeks, and then sort of following it up every month or so, just as I felt called cool to. And, you know, always just pray and ask God to show you, ask him to show you what is next for your healing journey. He has you know, a perfect plan for every one of his children and he's already made provisions for you. He's already started healing you before you're even aware I often find that God has been healing an area within me for months or more, probably even likely years or decades before I even consciously become aware of that part or memory. He is cleansing our deepest wounds with a father's love. And, you know, the love of a father is exactly what we need to heal. His love is more than enough to fill up all that we lacked to wash us clean of any trauma, of any horror, and to fill us up and give us the life that we missed out on as children. You know, when we stand on his promises, everything is possible with God. God and Jesus are so very close and they are fighting, you know, for survivors to get free. And all we need to do is keep turning in, keep turning into God and waiting on him. So let us begin. Sealing off prayer before deliverance. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. We thank you that you are El Shaddai and that you are the great I am. We thank you that you have given us the Holy Spirit to be the counsellor, standby, advocate, teacher, the deliverer. We thank you for your presence and for your deliverance anointing. It is the anointing that will break the yoke. Come and fill us with your spirit, compassion, love, discernment, word of knowledge, wisdom, interpretation, and insight. We, as your children, choose to crucify the flesh so that nothing from ourselves will be transferred here. We clothe ourselves with your priestly garments to fulfill the calling you have upon our lives. Open our spiritual eyes and ears, Father. Thank you, Father, that you have given us all the power over the enemy and that nothing shall in any way harm us. Behold, I have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power that the enemy and nothing shall in any way harm you. We forbid any interference with the work of the Holy Spirit. Father, we come against any communication lines between the powers, world rulers, principalities, spiritual hosts and demonic hosts in the air, earth, heavenlies, and under the earth, we close off all entrances and exits. We ask that all spiritual cameras and recorders be smashed. We come against any witches, witch doctors, magicians, and wizards. We cut off all communication with Satan himself and close the doors. We forbid any spirit from the outside to enter this place for whatever reason, and we forbid any evil spirit to be sent to any other place or person as a result of what happens here. We now forbid any reinforcement of power from the side of Satan. Father, we ask for confusion and division into the enemy's camp. 
Father, we ask you to set up your warring angels in this room and arrest any human spirit, dead human spirit, spirit guide, familiar spirit, and remove them to become the footstool of our King Jesus. We bind every evil spirit in this place and forbid any violence, manifestations, and tormenting. We refuse any meditation circles, isolate any power of demonic forces from each other. We forbid and bind any hypnosis and self-hypnosis, meditation, psychic powers. We isolate the powers one from another. We cleanse the four elements, water, air, fire, and earth with the blood of Jesus. We ask you, Father, to cover all mirrors with the blood of Jesus and seal off the gateways. We come against any spells, rituals, incantations, hexes, sacrifices, curses, or altars raised up against us and the person. Thank you that you blow out all candles which may have been lit in rituals against us. Thank you that all curses are reversed into blessings. Father, we ask that you seal off the rooms that we are in with the precious blood of the Lamb, that you will hide us in the Spirit and declare this room as holy ground. Father, we ask you to send your ministering angels to come and minister to us according to Hebrews 1.14. Are not the angels all ministering spirits sent out in the service of God for the assistance of those who are to inherit salvation? We surrender to you, Holy Spirit of God, because we know that it is not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, says the Father. We ask that you cover our loved ones and we place all circumstances under your control and protection. Our finances, marriages, families, our pets, relationships, ministries and communities, we now bind Satan's kingdom here on earth just as it is bound in heaven. We ask you, Father, to prepare the heavenly courtroom and that all demons and familiar spirits come and take their places. We ask you, Father, to be the judge, Jesus the advocate, and the Holy Spirit the witness. Thank you for your word. And they have overcome him by the means of the blood of the Lamb and by the utterance of their testimony for they did not love and cling to life, even when faced with death. We have overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. In the name of Jesus, amen. Sodomy Tunnels When a child gets raped or sodomized, they make a hole in the child's energy field and magnetic field, and then they fill it up with all sorts of evil. That hole needs to be closed and sealed, otherwise the child will never be free. In the name of Jesus and through the blood of the Lamb, we apply this petition over every fragment, shattered, broken, transmuted, alchemically, technologically, or light-altered part of our humanity, our essence, cause, brains, souls, spirits, and all associated systems, grids, dimensions, times, spaces, and realities. We take full responsibility and repent for every aspect we bring to the court of God, and we admit our guilt and align with the cross of Jesus for forgiveness. Typhon and Seth, in the name of Jesus and through the blood of the Lamb, we renounce, denounce, and divorce the Greek god Typhon and his transmutated form 
of the Egyptian god Seth. We renounce, denounce and divorce this god as the image, likeness and representation of the beast. We renounce, denounce and divorce each of the spirit animals' heads, bodies, tails and manifestations. We break our generational and personal covenants, contracts, vows, agreements and oaths and disconnect from all associated ceremonies, initiations and rituals. We nail all of these to the cross of Jesus. We petition that all domains and territories of these gods in and around us as and their manifestations of power, war, chaos and storms will be removed from us and nailed to the cross of Jesus. All confusion and destruction as a result of our fellowship and covenants with these gods is now nailed to the cross of Jesus and reversed in its entirety. We renounce and denounce the name of Awas as Set's other Egyptian or spiritual name. We also renounce, denounce and nail to the cross of Jesus any name or identity we have received from our involvement with these gods. We renounce and denounce and quantumly disconnect from all fire and fire sources, such as volcanoes associated with these gods, where parts of us are present in these dark fires and their sources. We petition for a godly rescue team to locate, find, rescue and bring them to the heart of the Father for healing, reorientation and deliverance. All alchemic processes, transmutations and changes to our God-given design and essence that have under been undergone through these dark fires are now reversed through the cross of Jesus. We silence the collective sound made by spirit animals and blot out their instructions, pronouncements, jinxes, curses and spells through the blood of the Lamb and extract from in and around them anything that pertains to us. Jesus, please cut with your sword the serpent's entanglement from our bodies, souls and spirits and judge this ancient serpent and its co-workers. We renounce and denounce Set as the Lord of the desert and the ruler of the south. Every part of us stuck in the desert the south or any other area of this God's dominion and territory is now rescued and brought to the heart of the Father for healing. All of us in the desert, including our cores, brain, cells, DNA, souls or spirits, are now released and restored to our original design. All invocation of the names of these gods as the helper in life and provider in death is now silenced as we renounce, denounce and divorce these gods. We renounce and denounce the triple god structure, power triangle quadrant and the ascension paths associated with Osiris, Isis, Horus, Nuit, Hadet and Rahu Kuit. We renounce, denounce and divorce Nuit as the great mother of the sky, Horus as the enthroned man and Rahu Kuit as the transformed man into a god. We renounce and denounce the sun energy, the dark flame burning in, in our stars and all alchemy and magic that causes transformation to take place. We petition that all sun and moon magic with their active energies in and around us will be shut down, stripped and nailed to the cross of Jesus. All sun, moon and star alchemy is now shut down, reversed and nailed to the, the cross of Jesus. We renounce and denounce Nuit's manifestation as the flame or had it in the core of our star. We disconnect from this dark flame inside of us, its manifestation, motion and time. We quench this fire through the waters of life and ask that the true fire of God will fill its place. 
we petition for their stronghold image and likeness in us to be utterly destroyed over all that pertains to us. We disconnect from the cosmology of ancient Egypt, Greece, and the lights of all fallen territories. We nail all of these to the cross of Jesus. The Typhonian, the Lemic order and religion, in the name of Jesus and through the blood of the Lamb, we renounce and denounce and petition to be separated from everything that marks us part of the Typhonian order and religion. We renounce the symbols, crosses, stars and flowers and petition for their removal from in and over all that pertains to us. Where we have been crucified and bound to the five and six pointed stars of the order, we renounce these defiled crosses. We reverse our choices to lay down our lives to this order, religion, and the dark gods behind it. We renounce and denounce all the death magic associated with this order and religion. We renounce, denounce, and divorce the generational shamans, alchemists, sorcerers, Wiccans, priests, priestesses, deacons, and every other rank and office associated with the order and religion. We repent where we have become these and give it up. We bring every ceremony, ritual, initiation, and appointment in the order and religion to the cross of Jesus and renounce and denounce them. We renounce and denounce the creeds made as part of this order and religion and strip and reverse their effect over all that pertains to us. We break the secret seals of this religion and order over our cause, brains, DNA, RNA, hearts, blood, seed, souls, energy systems, and anything else not mentioned here but applicable. We break it. We break the stronghold of the collective demonic and human rulership or heads of these organizations over all that pertains to us. We renounce and denounce their teaching, guidance, and instructions and nail them to the cross of Jesus. We renounce and denounce every triangle and quadrangle of power set over us and quantumly disconnect from their influence, powerpoints, and arms of control. Every covenant associated with these is now nailed to the cross of Jesus and declared null and void. We renounce and denounce every tetragrammaton of names, acronyms, spells and curses set over us and remove their inscriptions and sound from our cause, brains, blood, seed, water, hearts, and all else applicable. We renounce, denounce, and divorce the whole pantheon of gods associated with this religion and order. We bind them and ask that the host of heaven remove them and take them to the courts of God for judgment. We renounce and denounce the holy books of Thelema and Seth and blot our names and those of our generations from these books with the blood of the Lamb. We renounce and denounce the beast's writing and tongue over our cause, seeds, blood, hearts, brains, DNA, RNA, bodies, souls, spirits, energy centers, and anything else applicable. We blot out all of these by the blood of the lamb, and we reinstall the writings of God over all that pertains to us. We renounce and denounce the influence of the mysteries of the beast and come out from under their instructions. We renounce and denounce our dark scrolls associated with this religion and order and nail them to the cross of Jesus. We renounce and denounce the laws of Thelema and Seth. We renounce and denounce the identity of being a Thelemite. We renounce and denounce the three grades of the book of the law of Thelema. We give up the identity, ranking, 
office, scroll, birthright and assignments associated with being the man on earth who evolves into the lover and then becomes the hermit. We renounce and denounce the spirit bodies of each of these, quantumly disconnect from their energy systems and separate all of our original design from them. We disconnect the defiled earth our sexual organs and our brains from these three identities. We submit our essence to the cross of Jesus for deliverance, cleansing, restoration and healing. We break the power triangle and the associated ascension path linked to these three personas or offices. We renounce and give up the dwelling place of each as well as the accomplishment of the hermit to live in a place of religious seclusion. We declare that our brains are not the dwelling place of the hermit. We renounce and denounce all appointed guardian angels who guide us on this journey of ascension. We surrender our part that functions as a guardian angel to the Lordship of Jesus. We cancel our generational and personal appointments of these guardians as guards, directors, and governors over us. We quantumly disconnect from their control grids appointed over us. We renounce, denounce, and quantumly disconnect from every magic and or secret society that branched off from this ancient order and religion. We give up all membership and renounce and denounce the rights and privileges associated. Free will, in the name of Jesus and through the blood of the Lamb, we disconnect our will from every aspect of the Lima. The Lima means will. Every trade or transaction transferring our free will to another is now cancelled, reversed, and nailed to the cross of Jesus. We take back all our free will, especially our sexual free will, and return it to the original design. All contamination, control, perversion, and manipulation of our sexual free will is now nailed to the cross of Jesus and declared null and void. We renounce and denounce the following statements made by ourselves or on behalf of us, thereby trading our free will. Do what thou wilt. We renounce and denounce the false path of truth designed to find and determine our own true will. Every part of us on this path is now located, removed and brought to the heart of the Father for healing. We include our DNA and brainwave paths in this petition and call for a complete reset of the righteous paths of our free will. We declare that all righteous paths are now opened by the waters of life and the blood of the Lamb. No blockages will remain. We take the keys of the kingdom and open all righteous free will paths and shut all false paths. We shut down and block all communication of superimposed wills through the blood of the Lamb and declare them illegal. Godly guards are now placed at the entrance to these paths. All secret codes, hidden passwords, passages, and paths of darkness are now nailed to the cross of Jesus. Love is the law. Will is subjected to love. We renounce denounce and expose all alchemic changes of love into lust, perversion, addiction and gain. We renounce, denounce and divorce every false god of love. We quantumly disconnect from all that pertains to them and their kingdoms. We nail all of these to the cross of Jesus. We annul the lie that love is not as important as finding your purpose. To love is our purpose. We therefore come back into the plumb line of the love of God. We repent and take full responsibility when our purposes have been tainted by lust 
or prostitution or the misuse of others. All false manifestations of love are now nailed to the cross of Jesus. Every man and every woman is a star. We disconnect all of our free will from all stars and their associated quantum fields, magic, kingdoms, and technology. We renounce and denounce the great work we are called to do in the kingdom of darkness. We renounce and denounce the right to do as we please. We humbly come and submit our free will under the lordship of Jesus. Like Jesus, we declare we do nothing apart from asking our Father in heaven. We renounce and denounce every dark kingdom transmutation of the true will. We renounce and denounce the so-called true will and disconnect our free will from its deception and lies. We renounce and denounce the help of all occult authorities to find and achieve our so-called true will. We repent and take full responsibility for every instance where we overcame our inhibitions and God-given conscience by choosing the dark paths and their ways. We bring every trade of our God conscience where we locked it up in darkness by choosing darkness instead of light, death instead of life, lust instead of love. We nail it to the cross of Jesus and reverse its repercussions and consequences over all that pertains to us. We petition that the dark flames which have seared our conscience and inflamed our subconscious will now be quenched through the waters of life. We repent that we have freed the desires of the subconscious mind from the control of the conscious mind. We petition that the godly order of our conscience, subconscious, unconscious minds and imagination will be restored to us. We cleanse each of these memory banks and awareness through the blood of the lamb from all defilement. We repent for removing the restrictions God built into us to engage in sexual perversion. We petition that God's hedge of protection will once again be restored in and over all that pertains to us, rituals, in the name of Jesus and through the blood of the Lamb. We repent and take full responsibility for our involvement in every ritual of this order and religion. We renounce, denounce and divorce every participant of these rituals. We ask that all that pertains to us be removed from and around these rituals and their ritual spaces. We repent for every offering, worship and sacrifice we brought on these altars. We place all of these on the cross of Jesus. We quantumly disconnect and nail to the cross of Jesus every ritual symbol, weapon, star, trigonometry, emblem, and name. We break every power triangle, code, algorithm, and program of birth, death, and resurrection. We nail these to the cross of Jesus. We renounce, denounce, and divorce ourselves as elevated guardian angels or gods. We strip ourselves from the spirit body and energy of what we have become and ask that these parts or manifestations of us will be healed, restored, and reorientated in the heart of the Father. We nail all magic and alchemic power and energies created by these rituals to the cross of Jesus. We strip our minds, brains, cells, cores, blood, seed, water, hearts, and all spirit, soul, and body systems of all physical, mental, and spiritual exercises and magic traditions. We nail all ritual gestures, visualizations, powers, words, and pronouncements to the cross of Jesus and cancel their effect on our humanity. We petition that every part of our essence, life force, and humanity 
hung on the cross of Kabbalah will be removed and brought to the heart of the Father for healing. We disconnect from the defiled elements of water, earth, fire, air and ether and petition from their removal in and around us. We break every generational and personal covenant we have with these defiled elements. We renounce, denounce and repent of every ritual where Bible text was misused in the ceremony. We shut down the twisting of the word and it seals over all that pertains to us. All twisted scripture is now nailed to the cross of Jesus and its effect on our humanity is declared null and void. We disconnect from the magnetic fields of contaminated north, south, east and west. Their effects on our spirits, souls and bodies is now declared null and void. We renounce, denounce, divorce and come out from under the dominion and rule of the counterfeit archangels Raphael, Gabriel, Michael and Uriel. We remove the name of every God, power and principality written over any part of us during these rituals and ceremonies. We strip our energy systems of all effects of these dark rituals. All transmutations we underwent through these rituals and magic are now reversed, stripped from us and nailed to the cross of Jesus. We renounce, denounce and quantumly separate from the phoenix rising from the ashes. The phoenix is separated from our humanity and is nailed to the cross of Jesus. We nail to the cross of Jesus the vow and oath that says, there is no part of me that is not of the gods. We renounce, denounce and nail to the cross of Jesus every mystic journey involved and associated with these rituals. We break the ecstasy of these rituals over our minds, brains, heart, blood, seed, water and all else applicable. We renounce and denounce the false elements of the tabernacle used in these rituals. We petition that every element and symbol of darkness from this tabernacle and or the temple of Seth will be removed from in and over all that pertains to us. We give up the office of the high priest or priestess in in these temples. We strip these parts of us from their ceremonial clothing and office and nail these to the cross of Jesus. We hand these parts to Jesus for cleansing, deliverance and reorientation. Every tomb or grave associated with these rituals that holds part of our humanity is now emptied in the name of Jesus. All of our essence wrapped in death is now transferred to life in the name of Jesus and through the blood of the Lamb. We renounce and denounce the following Gnostic creed and divorce the gods associated with it. I believe in one secret and ineffable Lord and in one star in the company of stars of whose fire we are created and to which we shall return. In one Father of life, mystery of mystery, in his name chaos, the sole officer of the sun upon the earth and in the one air, the nourisher of all that breathes. And I believe in one earth, the mother of us all and in one womb, wherein all men are begotten and wherein they shall rest, mystery of mystery in her name, Babylon. And I believe in the serpent and the lion, mystery of mystery in his name, Baphomet. And I believe in one Gnostic and Catholic church of light, life, love, and liberty, the word of whose law is Thelema. And I believe in communication of saints. And for as much as meat and drink are transmuted in us daily into spiritual substance, I believe in the miracle of the mass. And I confess one baptism of wisdom, whereby we accomplish the miracle of incarnation, And I confess my life one 
individual and eternal that was and is and is to come. Orgum, orgum, orgum. We nail all that pertains to this confession and its elements, symbols and gods to the cross of Jesus and break their stronghold over all that pertains to us. We repent that we have mingled our blood with sexual fluids and used it in these rituals. We repent for applying the power of these elements to our bodies, souls and spirits. We take the waters of life and wash ourselves from these defilements. We renounce and denounce every mystery of mysteries involved and repent of having partaken in them. We remove all of our humanity from these mysteries and break their stronghold over all that pertains to us. We nail these mysteries to the cross of Jesus. We repent and take full responsibility for every blasphemy shrine in operation inside us. We repent for every offering and sacrifice of worship we have offered. We repent for defiling your name. Please forgive us. We repent the names of all gods and idols from our humanity and wash all that pertains to us with the blood of the lamb and the waters of life. We renounce, denounce and divorce all blood magicians and quantumly separate our blood from them. We renounce, denounce and divorce all seed and life essence magicians and quantumly separate our seed life force and light from them. All stolen from us is now restored to us. All birth, death and resurrection rituals are now nailed to the cross of Jesus. All reincarnation, transmutation and transfiguration rituals are nailed to the cross of Jesus. All candles are now blown out circles and stars blotted out and all altars are utterly destroyed. Lovecraft and sex magic. In the name of Jesus and through the blood of the lamb, we renounce and denounce the indictments into sexual perversion at each stage of ascension through the Typhonian tunnels. We renounce, denounce and divorce the sexual masters teaching us the art of sex magic. We give up the titles, offices and ranking of being a prostitute, male or female whore, in all of their expressions and practices. We break the initiation of all sexual acts at each stage of the ascension journey. We petition to be quantumly disconnected from each stage and their associated bridal chambers and whorehouses. We repent and take full responsibility for all we have traded and gained through these sexual interactions. We petition to be disconnected from the Typhonian and set grids of sexual magic and love craft. We renounce and denounce the craft in all of its totality. We strip our brains from all love craft and sex magic installing, control, software, programs, codes, algorithms, formulas, and all superimposed desires, lusts, and perversion. We petition for a complete rewiring of our brains and a reset of our brainwave states. All corruption of our brain tissue is now nailed to the cross of Jesus and reversed in totality. We renounce and denounce the dedication of our sexual organs, energies, and entrances to the love craft and its masters. We remove all that pertains to our sexuality from all altars and ritual elements. We petition to be quantumly disconnected from the sexual perversion loaded onto and expressed through the Typhonian tunnels. We give up all knowledge and expression of love craft and sex magic. We break the trance of all spells, incantations, hypnosis and brainwave states of lust and perversion and petition to be stripped from all associated technologies. We renounce, 
denounce and divorce all love masters and petition to be removed from all that pertains to them. We renounce, denounce and divorce the gods of inner strength and silence, the goddess of all pleasure, also known as the virgin whore, and the beast as the wild animal within man. We break their power triangle and points over all that pertains to us. We repent for being transformed into their image and likeness. We strip their light, power, energy and spirit bodies from all that pertains to us. Our covenants and contracts with these are now nailed to the cross of Jesus. We repent and take full responsibility for transcending into and becoming like a God through the power of sex magic and sex craft. We reverse these through the blood of the Lamb and nail all of darkness we have become to the cross of Jesus. All alchemic processes are undone and our essence is brought to the heart of the Father for healing, deliverance and reuniting with us when the time is right. We hang the keys we obtained through sex magic to open spiritual doors, secrets and mysteries to the cross of Jesus. We remove all of us present on the dark mystery and secret paths and lock these doors through the keys of the kingdom. All opening the gate rituals, spells Technology codes and algorithms are now cancelled and nailed to the cross of Jesus. We give up the demonic right of satisfying our dark sexual appetites. We strip our sexual instincts of all demonic defilement and nail these to the cross of Jesus. We repent and take full responsibility for every defiled act of consummation we have partaken in. We repent and cancel the dedication of our sexual organs, our wombs for the purposes of darkness. We nail these to the cross of Jesus and offer all of our sexuality to Jesus as a living sacrifice. We repent for defiling your temple through sex on your holy altar in the holy of holies. We repent for being the harlot and that we have consummated our union with the beast on these altars. We repent and nail these abominations to the cross of Jesus. Everything that identifies as the scarlet woman and or the beast or their offspring is now handed to Jesus for judgment, deliverance, healing and reorientation. All sexual confusion caused by the sex magic and sex cult activity and involvement is now nailed to the cross of Jesus. Every dark veil over our sexual identity is now removed and all confusion is cleared through the blood of the Lamb. All sexually confused parts are stripped of their alchemic sexual bodies, changing our identity into a sexual identity other than what we were created to be. All these dark identities are stripped from our humanity, stripped of their sex magic power and alchemic power and brought to the heart of the Father for healing, deliverance and reorientation. We disconnect our sexual fluids, blood and seed from all alchemic processes and reverse those already done influencing our humanity. We nail all charms and talismans associated with the cult and its magic to the cross of Jesus. All blood, seed and sexual alchemy are nailed to the cross of Jesus and reversed. We renounce and denounce the vow, oath and lie that man was to live in pleasure and not suffering. We align all of our being with the truth that it is a privilege to share in the suffering of Christ. We repent for every escape through the tunnels of death and destruction to avoid going through the sufferings of Christ. We renounce the vow that states we can relieve pain by seeking sexual pleasure. 
we nail this program to the cross of Jesus. We break the scale of balance between feminine and male sexual energies maintained through the sex cults and their magic. We now nail the imbalances caused and the scale to the cross of Jesus. We petition for the righteous scale and balance to be restored in and over all that pertains to us. We nail all magic formulas to the cross of Jesus and their effect on our humanity is cancelled and reversed. Kabbalah tree and Typhonian tunnels in the name of Jesus and through the blood of the Lamb. We renounce and denounce the paths and knowledge of going forth by night and day. We nail these to the cross of Jesus. We renounce and denounce the power of the sun and moon that enlighten the dark and light trees inside us. We quantumly disconnect from their power, dominion and control over all that pertains to us and nail their energies and influence to the cross of Jesus. We renounce, denounce and quantumly disconnect from the mystic grids of the Kabbalah trees, white and black sides with all occult practices, alchemy, magic and associated technological bondage. We nail these to the cross of Jesus. We break the yin-yang power of the white and black tree and the images, shadow, energies and frequencies it represents. We apply every prayer we have ever prayed to the hidden or black tree. We renounce and denounce the 13 gates, domains, altars, energy sources and sexual identities of the circles, the sephirot on the tree. We renounce and denounce the pathways between the circles on the tree as the Typhonian tunnels. Every replication of these tunnels in our brains, central nervous systems or body systems is now shut down, stripped and nailed to the cross of Jesus. We clear the collective conduit of energy represented by these tunnels and trees through the blood of the lamb, the water of life and the fire of God. Everything which is not of God is removed from these tunnels. All of darkness associated with the tunnels is now nailed to the cross of Jesus and their influence over us is declared null and void. We renounce, denounce and bind the hounds of hell that helped us in our pursuit of the dark tunnels. We submit to the cross of Jesus every bit of overcoming that is marking us because we are walking the dark tunnels as our ascension path to becoming a God. We nail all accolades, thrones, identities, powers, crowns, gifts and alliances we have attained through this ascension to the cross of Jesus. We renounce, denounce and divorce every God and spirit being who guided us on this dark ascension path of the tunnels of the trees. We acknowledge and repent that the tunnels involve our sexual organs and have become the means by which the kingdom of darkness can secretly access, control, manipulate and condition us. The quantum entanglement of our being with these tunnels is now undone. We flood the tunnels of our bodies, souls and spirits with the light of life and the fire of God. All of darkness present in our bodies, souls and spirits hiding in these tunnels are now exposed, bound, removed and taken to the court of God for judgment. We cleanse the gates of our female or male sexual openings, our anus and our mouths of all sexual defilement and repent of all three-way sex defilement. We nail these and the sins, transgressions and iniquities performed through them to the cross of Jesus. These three openings are no longer the gateways for the workers of darkness to access our tunnels. We strip these tunnels of their accumulated energies, 
No longer will the kingdom of darkness plug into these tunnels to refresh their energy supplies. We mark these gates with the blood of the lamb. We bind the demonic gatekeepers and extract all of darkness, their appetites and inclinations from these three gate systems. All dark energies, frequencies, vibrations and powers are now stripped from the tunnels. We declare that the beast computer is disconnected from the conduits of these tunnels running through our spirits, souls and bodies. We petition for the utter destruction of all conduits, cables and communication devices connecting us to darkness. All programs and technology with backups are now utterly destroyed as they are nailed to the cross of Jesus. The serpent inside, in the name of Jesus and through the blood of the Lamb, We renounce, denounce, and divorce all serpents of light and darkness. We nail these to the cross of Jesus. We repent and take full responsibility for the curse and assignment of self-destruction and mutilation upon which our dark twin has embarked. We repent that we see the journey through the tunnels as the laying down of our lives in order to overcome. We nail these lies and deceptions to the cross of Jesus. We repent and take full responsibility that the sword of Satan as his phallus, which is also the picture of him as a snake, gained access to us through these gates and tunnels. We repent and take full responsibility for every covenant, agreement, trade, vow, oath and transaction that gave him legal right to us. We nail all of these to the cross of Jesus. We declare that we no longer want the serpent in any of his forms or his associated workers to dwell in the tunnels of our body, soul or spirit. We ask that the snake will be bound, that he will be uncoiled from our spirits, souls, bodies, DNA, cores, cells, brains, hearts, and water. No part of us is to remain a dwelling place or hiding place for any serpent or spirit of darkness. We repent that we have married the snake and have ourselves become the snake. Every aspect of our snake image and likeness, our liberal thoughts, rebellion, anger, lust, and all other things are now stripped and nailed to the cross of Jesus. We are returning to God's original design. We shed the snake skin, remove the snake tongue and declare that everything that marks us as in covenant with the snake is now removed from us through the blood of the lamb. All sickness, infirmity, curses, plagues, disease, pain, trauma, torment or suffering associated with the snake, serpent, python or any form of his being are now cancelled, stripped, reversed and nailed to the cross of Jesus. We look at the cross of Jesus like those in the desert and declare we are healed from the diseases of Egypt. We decree that the scepter or knife of the serpent as his phallus, is now removed where it has been inserted into any part of our spirits, souls, and bodies. The staff of my God overrules any power of darkness. We are in covenant with him, and therefore we break the power of the staff of Egypt and serpent over all that pertains to us. We declare that as with Moses, The staff of our God now eats and utterly destroys the staff of the serpent. His dominion, power, magic and alchemy over all that pertains to us. All sex magic and alchemy seals are now broken and removed from all that pertains to us. We cleanse the pathways 
the tunnels inside of us, beginning with our sexual openings through our energy systems and into our brains from all contamination, defilement, occult, magic, technology, defiled presence, programs, sorcery, and anything else applicable. We break the power of the serpent to entice us and bind us to the addictive power of lust and sexual pleasure. We break the power triangle between the sorcerer or alchemist, snake and dark twin. All associated components are now nailed to the cross of Jesus. We disconnect the power of the snake from our willpower. We renounce and denounce the reward system of demonic sex and give up all we have gained through our engaging in demonic sex. We disconnect our willpower, compulsion and cravings from all which is demonic and nail these to the cross of Jesus. The spell and curse are broken. We nail all cycles of destruction, killing, stealing and destroying to the cross of Jesus all hypnotic states and trances with their triggers and connected technology and magic forces are now stripped and nailed to the cross of Jesus. We cleanse all of these lines associated with us from the associated dark triggers and assignments. We disconnect our tunnels from the fallen regions of the earth, underworld and waters below and the realms and spaces of the heavens. All false fires burning inside our tunnels are now quenched. We are not the fiery furnace of hell. All inflammation, chemical and or hormonal imbalances caused by false fires are now restored to their original design. Our tunnels are no longer ruled by the yin-yang powers of darkness. We quantumly disconnect from the dark alpha and omega tunnels or portals and declare all demonic or occult access denied. We quantumly disconnect from every current that flows from any God through the cosmology, their associated grids, tunnels, technology, magic portals and alchemic substances to any part of our bodies, including our cores, brains, hearts, blood, seed, spirits, souls, or anything else applicable and all related systems and constructs. All instructions, programming, codes, scrolls, or assignments received through these tunnels are now renounced and denounced, removed from us and nailed to the cross of Jesus. We petition for the fire of God and his goal to protect us from the reinstallation of these tunnels and their associated communication. We denounce, renounce, and divorce all demonic power, frequencies, vibrations, and energies that flow through these demonic currents. We strip all of our being from their influence, control, manipulation, and conditioning, all attachments, plug-in devices and cording are now shut down, cut, removed and nailed to the cross of Jesus. We renounce and denounce the holographic, hybrid, humanoid, spirit, body and DNA changes we have received through these currents. We strip all of our humanity from the masks, shells, force fields, powers, electricity, frequency and light alchemy that sustain this body. We disconnect our humanity from this spirit representation and nail all that is of darkness to the cross of Jesus. All changes to our original design are now reversed through the blood of the lamb. We renounce, denounce and divorce the souls of the serpents. We renounce and denounce the power to shape shift into a serpent or snake We break the power of all gold, red, green and black magic used for these purposes. We decree every storm and chaos on our humanity now be still. We shut the eyes of the serpent operating in and through us. We renounce and denounce the knowledge, 
wisdom and understanding of the serpent. We refute his knowledge and declare we do not fear him. Each level of the serpent stacked on our inside and on our generational lines, timelines, lifelines, genetic lines, seed lines and bloodlines is now gathered and nailed to the cross of Jesus. We nail the tongues of all snakes hissing and speaking against us to the cross and declare their instructions and trances over us of no effect. All serpentine senses are stripped from all that pertains to us and nailed to the cross of Jesus. We declare that our dreams, imagination, thoughts or emotions may not be used as a tunnel of access by the serpents. We ask that the fire of God will kill all scorpions hiding in our tunnels. Their coverings of gold will no longer protect them from being recognized for who they are. We strip all poison of snakes and scorpions from all that pertains to us. We speak healing and restoration to all our wounds as we place them in the heart of the Father. We break the power of the magical sending of scorpions and snakes to threaten and harm us. We renounce and denounce all favor we have with snakes, gods, the workers of death and the kingdom of darkness. All snakes in us are now extracted and removed. The harlot and the beast, we break every agreement and seal of three. We renounce the scarlet woman as the wife of the beast. We repent, renounce and denounce the power of the dark communion and its defilement. We repent for every source of blood and humanity we invested in these rituals. We petition for the removal of these elements of dark communion from our energy centers, brains and sexual organs, as well as all else applicable. We renounce the Scarlet Woman as the gateway to the pyramids, the Scarlet Woman and the Great Mother. We renounce and denounce all idols stored in our tunnels. We utterly destroy and remove them along with their altars. We petition for the restoration of any dismembered part of us given as a sexual sacrifice to darkness. We declare that our sexual organs may no longer be used as a replacement for any dark spirit being. We call these parts back to the cross of Jesus for cleansing. We renounce and denounce the queen's chamber in our cores and brains where the marriage with the snake is consummated. We ask that everything present of our humanity in these chambers will be removed and that the chamber will be utterly destroyed. The scent of the beast is now stripped from all that pertains to us. None of darkness, especially the hounds of hell, will be able to track us because the scent is now covered with the blood of the lamb. They will also not use the scent to mark their way through the tunnels to access us. This is prohibited. We declare that the scent of our seed and blood are now covered by the blood of the lamb and will not be able to be followed by the workers of darkness. We renounce and denounce the mantles of the beast and the harlot. We petition that mystery Babylon be dismantled and removed from us as we pray. All dedications of our humanity with the purpose of establishing mystery Babylon are now nailed to the cross of Jesus, reversed entirely. Duat as a door of death. We renounce and denounce her guidance through the abyss of death. We get off the beast. He is no longer our means of transportation through the tunnels. The 12 cabins of death, including Duat, found on the tree, are now disconnected one from the other and nailed to the cross of Jesus. We break the sequence and collective of the 13 graves associated with the Kabbalah tree in all its forms over all that pertains to us. We break the agreement made between death and all other gods and magic sources through the blood of the lamb. All death, 
magic and alchemy influencing our being are now nailed to the cross of Jesus. The state of death is reversed as the life of light infuses our inner man. We come out of the levels of darkness associated with the dark tree and its levels of ascension. We declare that those who sat in darkness will see the light of Jesus and follow it to life. We renounce and denounce the ritual of our dark twin, being in a coffin by day but rising at night. All coffins are now nailed to the cross of Jesus as all our dead parts are brought to Jesus to be restored to life. We disconnect all of our will and consciousness from captivity in Juat. We break the seal of Juat over all that pertains to us. We repent that we have offered our sexual fluids and blood as an offering for the Scarlet Woman, as her potion or elixir of life. We repent for having ingested this elixir and we wash all that pertains to us from the power and imprint of the elixir of life and reverse its effect in and over all that pertains to us. We break the power of the colour red of the Scarlet Woman, the God Typhon, and all others over all that pertains to us, everything pertaining to the ungodly application of the colour red with its codes, programming, control, manipulation and conditioning is now stripped from us reversed and nailed to the cross of Jesus. We strip our Kaaba and Ark of all dark tunnels and declare that we are no longer grafted into these trees. All parts of our essence and life force stored as mummies in the tunnels is now retrieved, unwrapped and placed in the heart of the Father for resurrection and healing. We break the alchemy formula and sequence of the colours of the four horses of death and Hades, of white, red, black and grey, over all that pertains to us. Their energy is now stripped. Our tunnels are no longer the throughfare for the demonic horses of death and Hades. The gods may no longer ride these horses and access our tunnels to bring death and destruction to us. The layered circles of death on the Kabbalah tree, marked as my progression into death, are now nailed to the cross of Jesus and all of my humanity is removed from death and restored to life. We bind the gatekeepers, hounds of hell, and gods guarding the gates to the underworld. We dedicate this gate to Jesus, for he has conquered death and the grave. We mark this gate with the blood of the Lamb. Every aspect of our humanity tied to death through this gateway is now located and brought to the heart of the Father for healing and restoration. We cut the umbilical cord of our dark twin with death and the wombs of death and the underworld. We break every covenant, agreement, vow, contract, oath, transaction, barter and trade we have made with the inhabitants of death. No longer do they have legal access to our humanity. We pray that all death, killing, stealing and destroying programs will be shut down and nailed to the cross of Jesus. We ask that all of our humanity will be connected to the life of Christ. We ask that our humanity be flooded with the waters of life thereby expelling all the deposits and workers of death, the shells or sephiro in the name of Jesus, and through the blood of the Lamb, we repent and take full responsibility that we have been initiated into mystery Babylon. We break the vows of silence of Babylon, breaking our alliance and enmeshment with Babylon and nailing them to the cross of Jesus. We submit the two halves of all programming under the blood of the Lamb as a singularity. All white and black programming, structures, control, conditioning and manipulation are now shut down, 
disconnected and removed from our humanity. We petition that the mysteries and secrets of Babylon will be stripped from our cause and that their programming will be broken in and over all that pertains to us. We renounce and denounce the protection, guidance and masquerading abilities of the shells of the light and dark components of the dark Kabbalah tree. We quantumly disconnect all of our being from the light and dark shells with their spells, technologies, energies, powers, frequencies and magic. We declare that no part of darkness will be able to hide behind the mask of pretend holiness provided by the shells. All of darkness is now exposed, even our own darkness, and we hand all of our darkness over to Jesus for healing, deliverance and restoration. The shells will no longer operate as spiritual obstacles along our way. The challenges they represent as the circles on the tree are now cancelled and nailed to the cross of Jesus. All perceptions of holiness that are, in fact, darkness, are now collapsed, exposed and nailed to the cross of Jesus. We renounce and denounce the group of 72 demons associated with the tunnels. We divorce and bind each one of them. They may no longer hide behind the magic spells and alchemic shells. In the name of Jesus and through the blood of the Lamb, we disconnect every tunnel from the rituals, magic, spells and alchemic processes that created them. We disconnect from the internal and external symbols and seals marking the tunnels. We renounce, denounce and collapse the labyrinths of death and destruction that these tunnels represent. We renounce, denounce and nail to the cross of Jesus the algorithms, codes, programs and formulas for travelling through these tunnels. In order to overcome the challenges set out by the tunnels, we had to sacrifice a part of us on the altars in the tunnels. We repent and ask that all these sacrificed and captive parts of us will now be released, that they will be returned to the heart of the Father for healing. We declare that we are no longer willing to risk and embrace the challenges of travelling through the dark tunnels. We give up the anointing, help and calling to do this. We nail all of this to the cross of Jesus. We declare that the tunnels will no longer vibrate with the frequency of the names of the serpent or any other God. These are now blotted out through the blood of the Lamb. All conceived through the tunnels are brought to Jesus for judgment. We renounce and denounce the healing light and power of the tunnels and quantumly disconnect all of us from all alchemic healing processes. We nail to the cross of Jesus the brain map, mind map, generational map, genetic map and coordinates of the tunnels on our insides. We renounce, denounce and ask for help to be evacuated from the realms of non-being. Please rescue all of us who transformed into the state of non-being from the fallen realms of darkness. We disconnect all grids pertaining to us from the tunnel structures set inside and over us. All ritual opening of the gates are now cancelled and nailed to the cross of Jesus. All analogue data and blood points of spiritual beings feeding on our tunnels and energy are now quantumly disconnected from us and nailed to the cross of Jesus. Let the light of life now flood our tunnels. We renounce the cloud by day and the fire by night that lead us through the demonic tunnels. We come out under the guidance of these guiding spirits manifesting as the cloud and fire of darkness. All demonic dust and smoke filling our tunnels are now extracted. We release all of our life and life force from the captivity and stronghold of the demonic tunnel system. Deliverance is ours. We renounce, denounce and come out of the tabernacle of death with its secret tunnel system. We petition for the destruction of this tabernacle over all that pertains to us. 
we renounce, denounce, divorce and petition for the removal of all vampires and necromancers who feed on our life force pumping through our veins or tunnels. They may no longer feed on us. All names given to our tunnels to mark the way are now nailed to the cross of Jesus. We break the collective connection between our inner tunnels and all outside and or fallen and cosmic tunnels. All ecstasy marking our tunnels is now stripped from all that pertains to us. All triggering, seduction and or summoning are prohibited. We wash our senses from all corresponding defilement. We break the magic power and trance of sexual addiction fueled by these tunnels. We renounce and denounce this discipline and call to travel the ascension path of the trees and their tunnels. We renounce, denounce and quantumly disconnect from the effects of Seth's milk, a combination of blood and sexual fluids. We declare that we no longer live from this demonic elixir. All hieroglyphics and generational inscriptions carrying the knowledge of the paths and tunnels are now nailed to the cross of Jesus and removed from all that pertains to us. We renounce, denounce and shut down each of the following main tunnels, alchemy tunnels, blood and seed tunnels, conjuring and imagination tunnels, corruption and false heart tunnels, curse and spell tunnels, focused mind and altered consciousness tunnels, sex tunnels, mastery of the mortal shell tunnels, spirit manipulation, control and conditioning tunnels, death tunnels, dark breath tunnels and death tunnels, as well as all others still unknown and hidden from us. We repent and take full responsibility for our generational iniquities, sins and transgressions that carved out these tunnels. We renounce and denounce the codes and oaths of honour associated with these paths and tunnels. We disconnect the tunnel system from the pillars of the iniquity of the past, the sin of the present and the expected end of the future. The whole tunnel system of darkness is now collapsing and the command will be given as soon as all of our humanity connected to and trapped inside of it is removed. Our black diamond structure is now disconnected from the tunnel structures. These are all nailed to the cross of Jesus. We petition for all righteous tunnels, that of our white diamond, to be restored in and over all that pertains to us. All phantom energy or hybrid energy of ours stored in the tunnels is now retrieved and handed over to Jesus. We petition that no part of our darkness personally or generationally, may find shelter in these tunnels. They are located and removed and brought to Jesus to deal with as he sees fit. All generational lost paths are also nailed to the cross of Jesus. No secrets and mysteries associated with the paths will remain. We bring all entrance technologies, openings, portals, vortexes and gates of any kind and shut them with the blood of the lamb. We strip all of the kingdom of darkness of their keys to access the tunnels of death, Hades and all fallen regions in us. We change the locks. They no longer have access. All mirrors connecting trees in various realms with one another are now marked with the blood of the lamb and removed. We disconnect from the trees, replicas in the underworld regions, water regions and heavenly spheres. We quantumly disconnect from all trees associated with those with which we are in covenant or demonically bonded. We disconnect from the death and false life energies of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We remove all shackles that keep us in bondage to the gods and serpents. Angels are now carrying us out of the tunnels. We disconnect our body's circulatory systems from the dark tunnels. All of our circulatory systems are now purged from the defilement of the dark tunnels. Let light restore our circulatory systems to God's original design. 
we renounce, denounce and nail to the cross of Jesus every replica and representation of this dark tree, backwards, forwards, sideways, upside down, inverted, mirrored, or by any other means applicable. All these trees are now shut down, stripped and removed from in and over all that pertains to us and are nailed to the cross of Jesus. We now trade all mysteries and secrets of darkness for the revelation, truth of light. We break the demonic agreements of these trees. We quantumly separate the two trees one from another. We remove all of our humanity and energy from these trees and nail the trees to the cross of Jesus. We ask that you take the axe and cut down uproot and burn the tree and all that pertains to it that is not of my humanity. Graft us into the true tree of life. Let your light and life flow through us, restore us and establish Christ in us. We pray this in Jesus's name, sealed by the blood of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, We pray against all backlash, whiplash and retaliation. Father, I pray that you cover every part of us, every part of the survivor community under the precious blood of Jesus, that we are protected and have complete provision provided by you, Father, because under your wings is our refuge. We pray all of this in your mighty name. Amen. So thank you so much for joining me today. I pray that this prayer has been powerful for you. And you know, I pray that by sharing, you know, some more of my revelations and my healing journey, it will make it easier to break through, you know, some of the barriers for for survivors. And, you know, it's really beautiful by us all connecting the dots together. We're able to move through this journey with so much more grace and Survivors literally are healing through things that used to take decades in weeks and months now. And that is so, so exciting. So I pray that this has been a blessing for you. And I just, you know, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your support. Thank you for, you know, sharing these videos and the interviews with other survivors that are, you know, learning and finding out about Jesus and true healing. And, you know, that's that's how we set our brothers and our sisters free. So thank you. And I just pray that God continues to bless you always and bring you miracles of healing in every moment. Many blessings.